CD Projekt Red has a good track record of designing some really attractive characters. Cyberpunk 2077 is a western game developer's worst nightmare, especially when every single named female character is exceptionally attractive. So I thought it would be fun to make a top 10 video for the most attractive characters in Cyberpunk. Don't worry, this is not objectification, we are simply just appreciating nature's beauty as God intended. And a woman's attractiveness is more than just her body. So go ahead and sit back, grab yourself a snack, and since it's another one of these videos, find a nice quiet place with a box of tissues. And let's go ahead and get into the top 10 most attractive characters in Cyberpunk 2077. You can find Mega Building 8 in the Westbrook District, and right out in front you can find a talking vending machine named Brendan. This machine has a software glitch that makes him appear more intelligent than he actually is, so much that a girl named Theo Price confides in him, telling him about her ex-boyfriend and how trash he is. Now I don't know what he did to her, but let me tell ya, I would never. I was disappointed that we never got to see her again. Theo is probably one of the only gothic style characters in cyberpunk. Honestly kind of reminds me of Marnie. I really wish we could have romanced her or at least texted her and fantasized about what could be. Theo I mean, not Marnie. Another character that we meet briefly and never see again would be Lana Prince. For those who choose the nomad life path, you'll eventually receive a transmission from your old car from the prologue. You will find it out in the landfill in the Badlands, but while you're giving your car a little inspection, you're approached by a rather dazzling individual named Lana Prince. She wants you to let her keep the car for herself so she can leave Night City once and for all. You can also just give her money to buy another car so you can keep your old car, or you can just tell her to piss off. Of course, I just give her my car. The things we do for love. She's actually based on a real person named Alana Pierce and it looks like she wanted out of Night City just as much as she wanted out of Rooster Teeth, which is actually an accurate comparison given how hard Rooster Teeth fell off the wagon. Lana pulls off the grease monkey look pretty well, and she knows her way around a car, and if she looked more like her real life counterpart she'd definitely be higher on this list, but Cyberpunk does have a more skilled and sexier grease monkey mommy, so minus points for unoriginality. Between characters like Rogue and Carrie Yervidine, some people in Night City look pretty gosh darn good for being 80 years old. However, Rogue has literally zero patience, but I can't say the same for Hanako. She has the patience of a sloth. By now, I've made her wait months, maybe even years. Let's just say that she better be perfect at that piano by now. But let me properly introduce you. This is Hanako Gyat Ara Arasaka. When I found out she was nearly 80, I kid you not, I soiled myself. If she doesn't look like Hanako when we're 80, I don't want her. I honestly can't tell if she had cosmetic alterations because Asian women, specifically of the Japanese variety, age like a fine wine. But regardless of her appearance, no 80 year old, especially a frail Japanese woman, would have a gyat this juicy. So it's safe to say she has had at least some cosmetic chrome. It's a pretty big leap to go from a sexy corpo mommy to a measly joy toy from your local strip joint. Now I'm not one to fall in love with the local corner girl or pole dancer. After all, I'm no Tyrion Lannister. But there is one person in Cyberpunk that I'd make an exception for, and that would be Ruby Collins. Ruby is one of the strippers at the Empathy Club. More specifically, the one Johnny tried to hook up with to get information before getting into a car crash, while he was in control of your body during the Chippin' In side quest. Now I get it, she doesn't seem like anything more than your typical joy toy. She's been ran through by evil corpo rats and even that one cool tattoo guy. But she's got a bubble butt similar to Valerie. A face that doesn't make me want to vomit. She is very clearly a risk taker, and even knows how to do the dance from the Friday the 13th game. So in my book, that makes her alright. But Night City isn't the only place that has attractive women. Dogtown too has its own resident babe. There is a side quest in the Phantom Liberty DLC called No Easy Way Out, where a boxer named Aaron has an implant that forces him to throw fights so the animal gang can choose who wins and loses. He wants your help removing the implant so he can win a fight and restore his honor. So you and Aaron both fight your way to a ripper dock he knows, and you begin the surgery. However, his owner shows up to retrieve her property. Her name is Angie. 
and oh my god, she could own me. If I knew the animals had babes like Angie, I wouldn't have slaughtered them all. But she will offer you a cut of the winnings from his next match if you walk away and let them put the implant back in. If you don't take Angie's offer and decide to kill her, although I don't know why you would desecrate the body of such a sexy gangster, then Aaron will win his next match, but will be killed after the fight. So for once in your life, being a simp isn't the bad thing. Roughly 7 years ago, I dated this insecure angsty girl with abandonment issues. Shoulder length hair, with the sides of her head shaved down, along with bluish green hair, who is also into girls. Does that sound familiar? Yes, that story was true despite all the people on my community posts who got legitimately angry and called me a liar for whatever reason. I sensed a little bit of resentment there. Regardless, I'd obviously make room for her on this list. Judy, I mean. Not my ex. Speaking from experience, insecure angsty girls with abandonment issues are the worst. And the best. I mean, Judy looks like your typical punk girl, so what's not to like? And she turns down multiple Corbo gigs so she can remain independent. So she does have a sense of integrity. So her attractiveness goes beyond just my teenage nostalgia and lust for women that aren't real. The Phantom Liberty DLC introduced a character named Songbird. She hires you to rescue the NUS president from her spaceship after it crashes in Dogtown. If anyone could convince me to join a terrorist cell, it would be Songbird. First impressions, yeah. Second impressions, a manipulative pathological liar that uses you for her own nefarious purposes. Which is totally my type. As a teenager, she's hot. As a special agent, she's hot. As a robot, not gonna lie, she's still pretty hot. Everyone these days is into toxic women, especially when they commit terrorism. So I know for a fact that even you think Songbird is hot. I mean, it's the main reason everyone sides with her over Solomon Reed, which gives you so much better rewards. And I say this knowing full well that I am 100% guilty of this. You'd think helping out a 90 year old gay dude would be just that, but you'll end up coming across the sexiest trio of Japanese buttes. This is the girl group Us Cracks. But one of them is leagues above the others, and that's Blue Moon. Throughout Carrie's entire questline, you'll see these three mamacitas. But your eyes will always fixate on Blue Moon over the others. She's the most requested romance option out of all the other women in Night City by a long shot. And for good reason. You see, Blue Moon actually has a stalker and she hires you to help her find him. So she dresses in casual kabuki slum attire and takes a stroll around kabuki roundabout. Only Blue Moon can dress like a hobo and look sexy while doing it. When you find her stalker, which is the fangirl in green, she thanks you and leaves Night City. And you never hear from her again. Please CDPR, let me invite Blue Moon over to my apartment. I beg. But there is one girl who's probably more requested than Blue Moon, and that's Rita Wheeler. Rita is the most underrated girl in cyberpunk. You go to meet with Evelyn to get intel on Compeki Plaza for the heist, and before you know it, you've fallen in love with the bouncer at Lizzie's. Rita has a petite figure with a manageable sized gyat and two pearlescent coconuts, and since her entire body is metallic, her skin quite literally shines. She may act all tough at work, but let's be real. She's just a big ol' softie. You can find her at the Growl FM party in Pacifica. You can approach her and she won't say anything, but she'll point at the couch telling you to sit. You can sit and vibe with her all night long, and she will never get tired of your company, which is something I can't say for everyone else on this list. Even Pan Am and Judy will tell you to wait a few days before hanging out with them again, where you can hang out with Rita Wheeler every day of the week and she will always enjoy your company. I have a tiger, babe. For those of us who grew up watching Transformers, Pan Am Palmer exists. Pan Am is known for making one of the best first impressions in gaming history. Everyone's first impression of Pan Am is her bending over the hood of a car working on the engine. In case you didn't watch the Transformers movie, this is a view that every man wants to see, and the absolute dump truck she's packing doesn't help. Pan Am is very hot-headed and hates the government. But more importantly, she's literally a ride or die. Plus, she does have attachment issues, so if you even look at her, she'll fall in love with you. She's literally the perfect woman, and has a gyat so fine you'll be on your knees more than my college ex-girlfriend. And let me tell you, she was not a woman of God. That's me when I see Pan Am Palmer. 
There you have it, that's the top 10 most attractive characters in Cyberpunk. Let me know who you think the most attractive Cyberpunk characters are down in the comments, and if you want to see more Cyberpunk and other RPG related content, then feel free to subscribe. Anyways, I'll see you later, and remember, the media lies.